Hello and uh, welcome to this week's episode of the Goodram Show with me, Chris Goodram. Uh, firstly, a big thank you to everybody that watched last week's episode of the show, liked, commented, all that kind of stuff. Um, your continued support is uh, is very much appreciated. Um, before we go on, uh, of course, any comments that I do make on today's episode of the show are wholly my own and have no bearing or relevance to my employer. Um, just thought I'd better get that one out of the way. Um, so this week... Um, as, as we're in the kitchen, as it's kind of like, you know, a bit of a throwback Sunday again, um, I thought I'd do a sort of a, a throwback episode of the show um, with a modern twist. Um, now, the throwback element is, of course, House of Macduff uh, that um, bottle the Golden Cask range, which I will be looking at today. But the modern angle is the fact that... Um, not that I'm saying the House of Macduff is an ancient, <laughs> ancient entity. Um, it's... Basically, years and years ago, before I started doing uh, the show, um, I used to, uh, or the company I worked for, used to purchase uh, bottlings from um, uh, from the house of Macduff, and uh, we kind of lost touch. Um, I forget why. I don't think we we certainly didn't have a falling out or anything like that. You know, they didn't um, uh, throw a hissy fit over um, you know, a poor review or something. Like I said, this was pre-YouTube days, um, in actual fact, quite a long time ago, um, and and so, uh, yeah, it was it was basically, we, we, we just kind of lost touch, I mean, it, it happens from time to time, um, you know, sometimes there's no sort of malice or anything like that, these, these things just happen, you know, it's like uh, um, having a relationship, I suppose, isn't it, sometimes you just drift away, anyway, um, so, yeah, Last year, um, I was dealing with a, a, another distributor who was, at the time, distributing um, the Golden Cast range and uh, obviously got some samples. Um, the, the said distributor is no longer distributing the Golden Cast range um, because Hash McDuff have taken it back and they're doing it themselves. So uh, I just want like, to say a really big thank you to, um, to the guys at... Uh, had some McDuff for the samples for today's episode of the show. And like I said, the modern twist on all of this, and I'll eventually get back to the the point I was trying to make earlier, is that these are all current releases. Um, and obviously, if you haven't figured it out, now the throwback is that I used to deal with them. I know, it's a, a tenuous kind of link, I suppose, but um, it was good enough for a, uh, an episode of the show, I think. So, not really a great deal to say um, about, uh, well, about House of McDuff, I mean, um, they have a website, doesn't contain a huge amount of information, but like I said, they've been going for for, for quite some time, and um, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's have a look at today's range, then, shall we? Right, first off, uh, <laughs> these are all single cask bottlings, all bottled at cask rinse, so obviously no coloration, no filtration, and uh, obviously I have uh, a water jug standing by because believe you <laughs> I'm going to need it because um, the first one we're kicking off with is 63.6% is it me or does does the ABV of whiskey seem to have rocketed up now you know I mean this is a 10 year old um, Glen Cadden um, cask reference CM um, 282 Distilled in September of 2010, bottled last year. Like I said, 63.6%. I mean, you know, it seems to me, you know, 10, 15 years ago, your average 10-year-old was maybe high 50s. I mean, I could be wrong. I mean, it, may, it just feels that way that, that sort of whiskey is getting a damn sight more alcoholic. Um, um, sample number two is a 10-year-old Akrusk. Um I believe I've pronounced that right, and, and um, so yeah, ten-year-old uh, cast reference CM two eight one distilled again in February two thousand uh, February two thousand eleven, bottled in uh, October of last year uh, at sixty one point three. Hmm. Get the theme here. Um, Bottling number three is a, a Glen Talkers. Uh, so again, 10 years old, distilled in June of 2001, bottled again October last year. It's a, a bourbon barrel CM283, 59.1%. Oh my God, one's below 60. Um, yeah, 
and um, the next moving on the next bottling we'll be looking at is um, if I help if I picked up the right uh, the right uh, sample um, is this one it is a Dalyuan again a 10 year old Dalyuan uh, distilled in February 2011 bottled October 2021 uh, Bourbon Hoggy CM284 59.8% oh, I'll be picking myself up off the floor after I finish this episode I can tell you that for a start and you may have noticed the nice thing is no sherry <laughs> all American oak um, then we're moving on to one of my personal favourite distilleries honest um, this is a 12 year old Deanston um, yeah, distilled in March of 2009, bottled in July of uh, last year, 65.2%. Um, Dear God. Um, yeah, there seems to be an awful lot of love out there for Deanston. Whenever, whenever I, there seems to be a lot of Facebook posts saying how lovely Deanston is, and I tend to keep my trap shut because um, I end up in, in trouble if I uh, if I said what I thought. Um, and the last bottling of the day, because we like to end with a little bit of peat, is a 11-year-old uh, Croftenga. Uh, obviously, Croftenga, as you well know, is one of the peated malts produced at Loch Lomond. Uh, this again was a Bourbon Hoggy CM274, distilled in May of 2010, bottled in May of 2021, 57.1%. Um, so yeah, nothing like finishing with a light one, is there? So yeah, I think this is going to be um, interesting. Um, I think it's going to be alcoholic. Um, I think I'm going to probably need a lot of water and I'm probably going to need help at the end of the program. <laughs> anyway, um, better shut up and um, taste some whiskey then, I suppose. <laughs> right, here goes. Uh, so 63.6%. Um, let's have a look what the Glen Caddam gives us. That's a lovely nose. Um, juicy, fruity, estery, um, pineapple, apricot, white fruit, apple, peach. That's a real fruit salad of a nose. That's, that's gorgeous. And even at such a high ABV, yes, you can obviously feel the alcohol. I mean, you know, um, it, it still it is actually pretty well contained. Um, there's some barley, there's a little bit of citrus, some spice. Um, that's just such a gorgeous nose. And it's got a slight earthiness as well. The barley note has a slight earthiness as well. So um, kind of classic Glen Caddam, really. Let's see what the bar's like. Mm, you notice that alcohol and jelly intense again really juicy fruity um, pineapple apricot peach pear mouth filling lots of barley little bit of spice that's a big a big big whiskey um, and it's crying out for some water I can tell you that for a start um, I'm kind of expecting it to kind of really open out um, with a little bit of water it does. I mean, it's still pretty estery, um, still fruity, a little bit more white fruit now, a little bit more sort of white peach and a bit of pear, possibly. Um, a little bit of spice now. Gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. Um, love this nose. Let's see what the pals like now. Still a bit of a, a bit of an edge there. You can still taste the alcohol. I mean, I probably have to put a little bit more water with that. Um, lovely intensity. Brought up the um, or brought forward, I should say, the uh, the citrus. There's a little bit more citrus now. Green citrus, sort of lime, that kind of thing. Maybe not quite so estuary, but still plenty of fruit, plenty of barley. Um, mm, that is a lovely whiskey at the end of the day. Okay, so let's move on to the Krusk. Uh, so 10 years old and um, 61.3. That's a bit hard. Um, it's a bit hard, it's a bit austere. 
it's not an industrial though. It, it's kind of it's plenty of barley, but the, the barley has this hardness to it. Oh, <laughs> Glenn Cadam repeating on me. Um, it's green fruit. It's kind of crisp green fruit sort of space eyed. Um, gooseberry, green gauge, lime. It's a little biscuity note, so it's kind of its youth is kind of f showing through a bit. Um, it's no, it's not a bad nose. Uh, it's just really hard and really austere. Um, I'm hoping that a little drop of water will um, sort that out. Anyway, let's see what passes like. That's really nice. I mean, that tastes more alcoholic than the um, the Glen Cadden, um, which is a, a bit of a surprise. But then this is the thing with whiskey. So some whiskies do kind of like contain the alcohol quite well. This is really, really masked. And like I said, all I'm really getting is a bit of biscuit, you know, it's a bit of citrus and it's really austere. Um, it's a bit of kind of crunchy sort of honey, um, but no sweetness it's quite quite alcoholic um so we'll put a little drop of water with it and see um what that does to it it's brought out a little bit of sort of burnt toffee-ish i guess burnt toffee caramel oak um again it's it's still quite green and lean um and a little bit austere and, and a bit hard it's it's not not a bad whiskey it is kind of it's i mean this is what i would expect from a kreutz um but with a little bit more weight i guess um it's a little like i said it's a little bit sort of amplified i suppose or you know amplifying the sort of like the the the, the hardness and the sort of um citrus sort of power side Right, that's brought out a little bit of oak, so it's kind of softened it a little bit. A little bit of vanilla, milky vanilla. Um, it's still a bit, it's still hard. It's short, hard. Um, like I said, it's not industrial. It's just kind of austere and closed. And uh, it's, I'm not sort of really, really warming to it. I'm kind of on the fence, if you see what I mean. It's it's not a bad whiskey. It's, a, it's, it's pretty indicative of the style of the distillery. It's just that little bit sort of too much, I guess, at the end of the day. Okay, so let's move on to the Glen Talkers. Let's see what the notes gives us on this end, shall we? Now, this has got the sort of like classic Glen Talkers, fresh, crisp sort of mineraliness, but there's an oiliness there as well. It's, a, it's actually quite weighty for a Glen Talkers. Um, so there's lots of lime, lemon, but it's got this this dense, weighty, oily, sort of slightly honeyed um, character. There's a almost grain spice kind of note. Um, I like this. This is a lovely nose. Um, it's got balance. It has balance that the acrusk doesn't have. The acrusk, like I said, was just really hard. But although this has that sort of intense minerally sort of uh, almost austere character it's got some balance to it a um, little bit of oak not a great deal in actual fact um, that does seem to be one of the things with uh, well so far with the, uh, the the golden cast range not a huge oak um, input anyway let's see what the power's on Again, quite hard, masked, granity, flinty, um, quite citric, really spicy, lovely spices tingling on the tongue. That's kind of obviously the alcohol is, is emphasizing those spices. Um, 
I can feel a bit of weight underneath all of that, and I'm imagining that that is going to come out when I put a little drop of water with it. Um, it's not as hard. It's minerally and it's citric, but it's not hard, if, if, if that makes any sense. Um, so, to me, this is more appealing than, than the Acrusk. Um, let's stick a little drop of water and see what uh, that does to it. Mmm, that sweetened it, brought out the barley, brought out the sort of, the richer side of the fruit, um, apricot, maybe a touch of tangerine, but it's still got that sort of minerality, but it's fleshed out now, it's got some, some meat on its bones, shall we say, um, that's lovely, a little bit more oak as well, a little bit more sort of toffee but again it's really sort of sitting in the background and it's kind of certainly letting the the, the spirit character come through anyway let's sort of pass on that like the nose it's a lot fuller a little bit more oak a little bit more vanilla um weightier oilier more barley, little less minerality, little less citrus, it's fuller, um, it's longer. That's good whiskey, that's lovely. Uh, I really like that, that's, uh, that's impressive. Right, okay, so let's move on to the 10 year old Dal Yuen, 59.8. Right, let's see what those get us on this end. Oh, that's a that's a big nose. Um, it's big. It's oily, balsamic, um, meaty, big. You know, it's it's this is a sort of um, kind of Dalyuan but amplified. Uh, I mean, Dalyuan often tends to be sort of quite malty, slightly meaty. I think this. I think they use worm tubs. I probably should have looked that one up. But I have a feeling that Dalyuan have have worm tub. Um, condensers and, and and it always has that sort of weightiness to it um i mean this is a classic galu and it has to be said um a little bit of vanilla a little bit of herbal spice so about that Rich, slightly sweet, meaty, barley, full, touch of bovril, short, mask, obvious, um, slightly spicy. It's, it's a bit sort of like, um, I wouldn't quite say one dimensional, it's a bit of a sort of a one trick pony, but then it's kind of Dalyun at the end of the day, you know. Um, you always kind of, to a certain extent, with some of these distilleries, um, temper your expectations, should we say, and Dal Ewan does tend to be one of those kind of distilleries which can be relatively simple. Um, well, in, in saying that, though, that there's nothing wrong with being simple. If it delivers what you want. Um, it's kind of... Water has really not done a great deal of deal for it. It's kind of made it slightly... Not watery, but it's there's not a lot going on now. Um, it's certainly a lot less interesting than uh, than neat. It's kind of yeah, it's kind of yeah. Anyway, let's see what pass on now. Palette is is pretty much the same actually. It's a bit softer. Still quite rich, still quite meaty, a bit more vanilla oak. But again, it's, it's, it's kind of a really lacking some major complexity. Um, which brings me on to the price of this. This is quite expensive. The, these three are all sort of would retail in the 50s some, somewhere, 50, mid 50s, shall we say. This is 65 quid on the shelf and... I don't know why it's so expensive. I mean, it's only Dalyu and it's only an 11 year old. It's not like it's some, you know, um, swanky distillery. It's Dalyu and for God's sake. Um, I don't get why this would be 65 quid on the shelf. And frankly, I don't think it's worth, worth the money.
that's just my personal opinion. Yeah. Right, on my favourite distillery then. Deanston. Oh yes, that's Deanston. Um, right, okay, so off the bat, loads of distillery character. You can't complain about that this bottling does not have loads of distillery character. Um, on the negative side, loads of distillery character. Um, it's not a, an easy whiskey to love, it has to be said. It's hard. It's industrial, it's, it's malty, it's kind of young, there's a bit of rose petal, mari, potpourri, I mean, you know, it's, it's just a classic sort of, you know, subscriber to the second law, Goodrum's second law of whiskey, and of course, you know, that is basically, you know, pretty distillery equals pretty malt. Mm, and the reverse, obviously, um, you know, and, and we know D Deanston is not a looker. It's an, an ex, um, you know, mill, um, cotton mill or whatever it was. Um, it's an industrial building and by God, the bloody whiskey is industrial. I mean, it is not soft and fruity. It's not the Glen Talkers. It's certainly not bloody Glen Caddam. Um, it's just kind of, it's hard work. I mean, this is probably not the worst Deanston I've ever had in my entire life um, but it is very Deanston so anyway let's see what power Jesus Christ I mean oh, that's bloody alcoholic I mean that I mean what was that 65.2 percent i mean just imagine sort of like that amount of alcohol that industrial character sit a bit of citrus and, and that's pummeling your palate into submission i mean you know there's there's no kind of like you know it's, it's like hulk hogan sitting on your face really uh, may, oh i don't know maybe was that a good analogy oh i don't know anyway um it's pretty unforgiving stuff, it really has to be said. I mean, it's not soft and fruity and, you know, it's kind of, like I said, it's 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 Hulk Hogan sitting on you. Um, uh, let's put a little drop of water with it. Um, I don't know whether that will actually... Well, we'll, we'll see. I mean, you know, silk purse, pig's ear, you know, that kind of thing. Mm, no, it's still, it's still very much the instant... It's still quite rough and ready, and there's a little bit of lemon, and there's a bit more barley, possibly. Um, it, but again, it's still pretty hard work. Let's see what the pads are. Like. Mm. Well, it's not really kind of falling apart, I'll give it that. Um, a lot of these sort of high ABV sort of car strength bottlings can often fall apart. Um, it hasn't fallen apart, but there's just nothing really there. It's kind of a little bit watery, it's a bit vague, it's a bit kind of, mm, you know. Um, and it's it's kind of rough and industrial on the, on, on, on the aftertaste, and it's kind of like, oh, this is not enjoyable, you know. Whiskey is supposed to be about enjoying things. I mean, although I do joke it. Um, the tasting evenings, you know, that the, the, you're there to learn rather than uh, enjoy yourself. But, you know, um, there's learning and then there's learning, it has to be said. And, you know, apologies to all of you guys that love Deanston, but Jesus Christ. Right, okay, so time for the last uh, in the alcoholic fest of uh, today's episode of the show. This is only 57.1%. You know, anyway, so Croftanger. Oh, that's weird old Loch Lomond, isn't it? I mean, I don't know, why, why, why do I love this stuff? Um, it really is kind of burnt rubber and leather and herbal peat. Dear God, it's got a huge amount of peat. I mean, what in God's name did they peat this to? Um, pepper. <coughs> Ooh. Deanston's are having a go back at me. Um, a bit of Turkish delight, a bit of that sort of high-toned, sort of 
Loman Stilly kind of note. Um, I mean, it really is. Dog's dinner is not kind of like the the right word, honestly. It's kind of um, it's fun. It's interesting. It's weird. You know. Um, it. I mean, you know, this is everything that the Deanston isn't. I mean, it's. It is kind of hard work. It's not the sort of whiskey you'd go, oh, I really fancy a drop of Loch Lomond tonight. Um, uh, it's kind of something you, know, you have to kind of build yourself up to, to a certain extent. Um, and again, it's kind of almost in the sort of subscribing to the sec the Goodrum Second Law of Whiskey, in that, you know, Loch Lomond, as you well know, is like a tin shack on an industrial estate in Scotland. It's certainly not a looker, you know, it's not, you know, you wouldn't sort of like, you know, go, go up to it and go, oh, that's a pretty distillery. Um, and um, it's kind of, <laughs> you know, its product is certainly not kind of what you would call pretty uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but it's interesting. You know, there's a, there's a kind of like a sort of, you know, weird fascination kind of going on here. Um, let's see what the palette's like. Intense, ashy, not as masked as you would expect. I mean, yes, it is a bit short because of the alcohol, but... Alcohol's actually quite well contained, quite peppery, rose petal Turkish delight, um, plenty of peat, earthy peat, ashy peat, um, there's a, not quite metallic, but there's a bit of a sort of an edginess going on there, I mean it's a sort of like kind of, I suppose if Deanston did a peated malt, you'd probably go, hmm, yeah okay, that's got an edgy earthiness, that's got a bit of an industrial character, but it's got some peat, and it kind of like, you know, it kind of works. Um, yeah, that's, that's a point. Maybe that's what Deanston should do. Deanston should go heavily peated. Whether they do heavily peated, I have no idea. But my God, that would make it more intriguing. Um, anyway, I'm going to put a little drop of water with the um, the, the Loch Lomond, the Croft Anger, uh, and see what happens there. Um, you know, I always like to have, you know, a Croft Anger on the... Um, uh, on the um, on the shelves, if people like something a bit of a challenge, but not kind of like too challenging, if you know what I mean. Um, to be honest with you, water really isn't doing an awful lot for it. It's 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 kind of pretty much as it is neat, to be honest with you. Um, it's maybe a little fuller. To be honest with you, I think I would drink this neat rather than, even though it's like 57%. That's what it passes right now. Yeah, the palette's okay. I mean, it's again, it doesn't seem to have developed an awful lot. Um, some of the intensity is obviously dialed down because you've dialed down the alcohol. Um, I like it. It's a bit weird. It's funky. Um, it's left field. Um, don't put any water with it. Um, and um, you get that full intensity of Loch Lomond weirdness. And well, we all need a bit of weirdness in our life, don't we, honestly? Um, hmm. Interesting one to finish with. Right, okay, so um, let's sum today's episode of the show up. Um, firstly, a big, big thank you to uh, Jane at uh, the House of Macduff for the samples for today's episode of the show. Um, I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the review. Um, I don't think I've said anything untoward, to be honest with you. Um, now, Glenn Cadham, yeah. That was really, really good. Um, a certain a certain whiskey shop has bought quite a bit of that. Well, I say quite a bit. Uh, has, has bought a case of that um, because a certain whiskey shop really, really liked that and uh, a certain whiskey shop would like you to buy it. Um, the <laughs> the Krusk. Um, yeah, really not my kind of... Didn't do it for me, shall we say. I mean... It, not a bad whiskey, certainly very indicative of the distillery, but a sort of slightly more amplified version of the distillery and just kind of lacked a little bit of sort of complexity. Um, certainly, if I was a retailer and I was thinking, well, I've got a retailer for 50-something-odd quid, is it something I would get behind? And, and 
basically the answer is um, no. The Glen Talkers, on the other hand, had more balance. It had a bit more weight behind it, um, which is slightly unusual by Glen Talkers standards because it tends to be quite minerally, quite austere, almost to the sort of point of the um, the Krusk. Um, but it, it, there was just a bit more going on, a bit more sort of interest, um, a bit more balance, basically, at the end of the day. Um, the Dal Ewan, um, again, you know, it was very much classic Dal Ewan, but why I would have to retail that 65 quid, I have absolutely no idea. Don't understand why that's quite so expensive. It's certainly not worth that money at the end of the day when you could have the Glen Cadden for probably five, seven pounds less. Uh, probably, yeah, seven, yeah, probably about seven, seven or eight quid less. And I know which one I would rather have, it has to be said at the end of the day. Deanston, well, again, you, you can't argue that it lacked distillery character. Um, there was distillery character there by the bucketful. And if you like that kind of distillery character, then brilliant, marvellous, great whiskey, buy it. For me, you're, no, I'm not going there at all. It's just not floating my boat whatsoever. Um, it, it's not weird enough, that's the point. I mean, Deanston is just kind of bloody hard work. It's industrial, it's just kind of... Whereas the Croft Tenger is weird and it's hard work, but it's fun because it's weird and it's hard work, if, if, you, if that kind of... if you follow my logic on that one. Um, again, it's the sort of whiskey that's not going to appeal to everybody, it has to be said. But I really enjoyed that, you know, it's, like I said, it's, it, you know, it's maybe a sort of an end of the evening kind of whiskey. It's kind of like, you know, you've had maybe one or two beforehand and you just want something to kind of shock your palate, I suppose. Um, and certainly the, um, the, 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 the Croft Enger does that. So, um, so yeah, I mean, interesting lineup, it has to be said, interesting selection. Um, I, like I said, I've been, you know, worked with um, and bought from um, House of Macduff, you know, many, many years ago, and there was some uh, outstanding bottlings that, that were done. It would be interesting to, to sort of go back and sort of, if I had the opportunity to sort of retaste some of those um, whiskies in the past, knowing now, if, if you follow my logic, um, would I would I have loved that? You know, it's it's a kind of a what if kind of scenario, isn't it? It's the same with everything, isn't it? You know, you're, you over the time, you sort of you, your palate develops, and um, you know you some things you may well have loved in the past, you probably wouldn't now. But anyway, um, I'm kind of waffling. It has to be said, and that's probably something to do with the amount of alcohol I've just consumed. Um, so interesting stuff. Look out for the House of Macduff if they're available in your locale. There's some lovely bottlings that they're doing. Um, so all that's left to say is I uh, hope you've enjoyed this week's episode of the show. Good ramming and good afternoon. <laughs>